Hi folks, back with uh, more ancient cosmography. Um, let's see. You know, I had s spoken in earlier videos about um, that it seemed that in the Egyptian Book of Two Ways, it may be labeling Van Diemen Gulf <coughs> as like a special place, like the efflux of Osiris. And um, so it may relate to some of this stuff, the fact that it's full of this weird sediment, tidal energy. Because you can just tell by looking at it from above that it's very different from regular bays and gulfs. It's full of this light colored sediment. So I'm thinking that might be or relate to the efflux of Osiris, the effluvium. And so, and then, uh, let's see, I was asking the chat GPT, which is the AI so-called, some questions. So I asked, do zoomorphic maps exist? The AI said, you know, it's some internet thing, whatever, uh, internet AI. Yes, zoomorphic maps, also known as anthropomorphic or personified maps, do exist. That's pretty funny. This is like in the first sentence, you see how stupid this AI is. Um, artificial stupidity, like... Zoomorphic maps, also known as anthropomorphic or personified maps. <laughs> no, no. Zoomorphic means animal formed maps. Anthropomorphic means human formed maps. So no, they are not also known as that. Stupid fucking algorithm. Um, these are maps that use the form or features of animals or humans to represent geographic regions or convey information about a specific area. Zoomorphic maps can be found in various historical contexts, particularly in medieval and Renaissance cartography. So basically, the further back you go in cartography, the more it's like this, you know, ancient Egyptian map of, uh, you know, the Azores and uh, Madeira and the Bahamas. There's... Uh, Let's see, particularly um, during those periods, map makers often employed elaborate and imaginative designs, including the use of animal or human figures to represent countries, regions, or natural features. So this is literally everything that I'm that I talk about on my channel lately, which some people think is just in my head, but even this retarded AI understands that it's legit um all right i hope that wasn't hate speech against ai or anybody but uh whatever let's see these figures were often depicted uh with characteristics or attributes associated with the represented areas such as cultural symbols physical geography so the ones I'm focusing on mostly just show physical geography in the shape of, you know, an animal or a person. Or historical, um, features. These features were often depicted with characteristics or attributes associated with the represented areas, such as cultural symbols, physical geography, or historical events. Uh, an example of a zoomorphic map is the Hereford Mapa Mundi, a medieval world map dating back to the 13th century. This map combines religious, historical, and geographical elements with various animals and human figures representing different regions and mythological beings. It provides a visual representation of the known world at that time, including both real and imagined locations. While zoomorphic maps may not be as prevalent in modern cartography, they still hold cultural and historical significance. 
They offer insights into the artistic and symbolic aspects of map making and provide a unique um, symbolic yep, example of zoom of a zoom. Oh, I provide a unique perspective on how people from different eras perceived and represented their world. So basically everybody in the past represented their world anthropomorphically, just as they represent the sky anthropomorphically. And that is what the gods are. Um, what the F did I do this twice? Uh, okay. Um, is the underworld the antipodal hemisphere, which it is, but I'm just trying to see how stupid this uh, algorithm is. No, the concept of the underworld is not directly related to the antipodal hemisphere. The underworld typically refers to the realm of the dead or the afterlife in various mythologies and religious beliefs. So that's not really a refutation. It's just saying no. It doesn't really explain why. In many cultures, including ancient Greek, Roman, and Norse mythologies, the underworld is depicted as a realm beneath the Earth's surface. Uh, well, the opposite antipodal hemisphere is beneath the Earth's surface, technically. Or in a separate realm altogether. Those meaningless uh, words. It is often associated with concepts of death, spirits, and the journey of the soul after life. Being associated with things doesn't mean it's not something doesn't make it not antipodal. On the other hand, the antipodal hemisphere refers to the region on the Earth's surface that is diametrically opposite to a given location. Yeah, I know, idiot. You think I you'd know the word antipode and don't know what it means? Um, it's often a uh, la, la. For example, the antipodal hemisphere of a specific city would be the area on the opposite side of the Earth, while the concept of the underworld may involve geographical or spatial elements in its mythological descriptions. It is not directly equated with the antipodal hemisphere by this stupid algorithm. The underworld is more concerned with the metaphysical realm of the afterlife. Well, the antipodal hemisphere is a geographical concept base. So this is just total arbitrary gibberish. Anyway, my phone's probably going to cut me off in a second. Speaking of technology sabotage, but why did Egypt erase the Hierakonpolis tomb 100 mural? Which they definitely did. This thing here, this is, doesn't, they erased the shit out of this with the British Museum. Their answer, there is no specific historical evidence to suggest that Egypt deliberately erased the mural from T100 in Hierakonpolis. It's important to note that historical preservation practices and the reasons behind the alteration or destruction of ancient murals or artifacts can vary, <laughs> and specific cases require detailed examination. However, it's possible that over time, natural decay, anyway, garbage. This is what you get from the fucking scum that run the world nowadays and their technology. What are some anthrozoomorphic prehistoric maps? It says, pre 